the stars are right, and that means it's time for another episode of The Whisper in Darkness. I'm your host, The Man from Lang. Thank you very much for joining me today. On this episode, we're kicking off our discussion of the Investigators from the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion with a look at the Guardian Investigator in the box, Zoe Samaras. There are spoilers throughout if you care about that sort of thing. If you enjoy what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Before we get started, I'd like to thank the patrons of this channel for their tremendous support. The Arkham Horror LCG community is amazing, and these people have gone above and beyond to bring you content like these player card reviews. If you'd like to support the channel's goals and see your name on this list, head over to patreon.com, sign up for a tour of your choice, and claim your rewards. Special thanks to Cole Monroe Chitty for the amazing art that graces the channel, Nicole Fiscus for the new Whisper in Darkness logo that I use for the podcast, and Nate Lost in Time and Space for the intro as well as the overlays. Thank you very much, I couldn't do it without you. Without further ado, let's get started. Welcome back everyone to our reviews of the player cards in the Dunwich Legacy Investigator expansion for the benefit of new players. We've uh, wrapped up our reviews of the uh, player cards and we are moving on to the investigators starting off with uh, Zoe Samaras, the chef. She is the guardian investigator in the box. She has four willpower, two intellect, four combat, and two agility. She has the believer and hunter traits. As a response, after you become engaged with an enemy, gain one resource. Her elder sign effect is plus one. If this skill test is successful during an attack, that attack deals plus one damage. She has nine health and six sanity. What do you guys think about uh, Zoe? I've always really liked Zoe. One, because, you know, she and I shared a profession at one point in life, so that's always nice. And her ability to gain resources is pretty nice. Well, you're not going to generate resources like every turn with it, you know, you'll probably generate like three or four extra resources throughout the course of a game. And that's pretty good. It's like an extra emergency cash in a mm -hmm. class that really needs resources. I quite like yeah. it. Her high willpower also lets her uh, soak treacheries pretty well as well as you can sort of uh, curtail rotting remains with with a guts pretty easily, you know, going up to six that puts you three over you're more than likely going to be able to tank through those. And that's really helpful when you only have six sanity and having nine health means you're, you're going to be fine dealing with soak from enemies Four combat is also nice. She does struggle in the investigative department. If you need her to discover clues, that'll be tough. But fortunately her card pool does allow her to dip into some pretty viable options for her. Yeah, they've got what flashlight evidence. You could even go into mystic spells. Right that's seeking. true that's true because she can take five off class cards um right of seeking that's that's actually a pretty good one because that guts you were talking about you can use guts on right of seeking mm -hmm. it's a little expensive but you know fortunately her ability lets her afford more things yeah i like i like how zoe is um she's pretty straightforward she's probably a she's probably like one of the best investigators to like teach new player arkham with because her you know what she wants to do is pretty straightforward you engage things get the money then you kill the things and thanks to thanks to willpower she's not gonna fall over like like roland will to rotting remains right yeah and her ability naturally synergizes with her signature card that we'll talk about later as well which is really cool so yeah it it's it's a great teaching tool i think in that regard it sort of teaches you like how cards interact with one another and how, like how to set up combos and stuff which is I think a great mm -hmm. great way to introduce newer players into the game, like you were saying, Matt. I think she actually gets even better at three and four players because at three and four, you're able to get away with not being very good at investigating because you you have like one or two others to lean on when it comes to getting the clues. Mm -hmm. So her having only two intellect is, I'd say, less of an issue the bigger your table is. That and you have more enemies to engage. In four player and you have more enemies to engage in four player That's... to get money off of <laughs> i have had some of my most uh one of my most memorable solo campaigns playing zoe her stat line is uh very good for what she wants to do Four willpower protects her from the encounter deck for combat makes defeating enemies uh not that difficult two intellect is uh is an issue but uh, she does have access, I think, to enough uh, investigation tech to make it uh, work. And I think she's only gotten better in that regard as the card pool has expanded and we've received things like Scene of the Crime and whatnot that 
that she can discover clues uh, testlessly. And of course, she wants to be engaged with enemies, so that even works to her advantage. Two agility is a bit of a problem, but uh, that's sort of common to most of the Guardians. And Guardians have since received some help in that regard with cards like Daring that can shore up that uh, weakness. Gaining the additional resources is great, especially in Guardian, who tend to need a lot of resources to play all of their assets. Granted, you are going to be occasionally plugging that resource into her her signature card in order to uh, to deal damage to enemies. Her Elder Sign effect is nice, but I don't know how often I've actually triggered it for the plus one damage. It is nice when it happens because suddenly, especially if you're using something with charges, that plus one damage might save you a charge here and there, but Honestly, I can't remember how often I've triggered it. She is pretty, uh, she does have more sanity than uh, than Roland does, which is nice. Although her uh, signature weakness, as we'll see, does uh, deal mental trauma, which can be uh, a problem, especially if that, if you get a bit unlucky and it adds up over the course of a campaign. But uh, yeah, I think uh, I would agree. She's uh, She's very straightforward. Engage the enemies, get the money, kill the enemies, rinse and repeat, and uh, you're good to go. Now, Zoe's uh, backside has a deck size of 30, deck building options, guardian cards at level 0 to 5, neutral cards level 0 to 5, and up to 5 level 0 cards from any other class. All of the Dunwich Legacy investigators have similar deck building restrictions, basically their class, plus 5 cards from any other class and her deck building requirements. Uh, do not count towards stack size, Zoe's cross, smite the wicket, and one random basic weakness. What do you guys think about uh, Zoe's deck building options? I've always loved the Dunwich's uh, ability to grab from any card pool. It really allows you to experiment with all sorts of combinations of cards that a lot of investigators don't have the freedom to do, which mm -hmm. I really always appreciate, and Zoe is no exception to that rule. You know, like we were saying earlier, like spells like Rite of Seeking or even Triveling to act as like backup weapons aren't bad options in Zoe, so you could go that route. Survivor gives you a lot of tools to help shore up investigation with like, look what I found and Lucky if you wanted to go with that route. You could also go into Seeker if you wanted to be like a pseudo Roland and take things like working a hunch or... Art student. Art student, yeah, stuff yeah. like that to help like soak up sanity and grab clues. You could also go into Rogue if you wanted to grab, like, Leo DeLuca and maybe try to stab things a bunch of times and generate actions. There, You know, there are plenty of routes you could try out and see what works for mm -hmm. you. Yeah, there's some pretty good, good level zero cards that would that work in, in generally any investigator, so thus any of the that much investigators. I mean, Quick Thinking, Lone Wolf, mm -hmm. Liquid Courage even. You know, these... Uh, wait, I'm just thinking Rogue. Look at me, one-track mind. But uh, Ward of Protection, that's a classic one. Lucky. Mm -hmm. Lucky's great. Let's see. Shriveling. We talked about Right of Seeking earlier. There's a lot of level zero ways that she could kind of cover what she's not so good at in those five off-class cards. Or if you're playing hyper-specialized, she, she can just double down and take something like Quick Thinking, you know, to, like, maximize her combat turns. Yeah, you can sort of like grab staples from any class. Like if yep. if you're playing with people that aren't playing those for whatever reason, like maybe they don't have access to them, you can just sort of grab those, and your deck is probably going to be better for it, which is yeah. always nice. It, it like it it makes every one of those upgrades feel meaningful because you know it's going to be good. Yeah, I often find that choosing those five cards for the Dunwich Investigators is one of the toughest decisions that you make in this game because there are just so many good options. I mean, you get basically the cream of the crop of any class in the game. One of the great things about having all of that to choice is you can pick cards that uh, sort of plug a hole in, in Zoe's game plan or accentuate uh, what she's doing already. You've already mentioned some of the, the cards that see a lot of play. Ward of Protection uh, being one of them. Lucky is another uh, another great option. 
for her. Zoe's four willpower really makes uh, a lot of the mystic cards uh, very appealing. As your card pool expands, uh, one of the cards that sees play now is uh, Brand of Cthulhu that you can uh, add to her combat suite. So she has, say, uh, a machete or a, a enchanted blade and then Brand of Cthulhu to help uh, backstop that against uh, some of the uh, tougher enemies. One of the other options that uh, I've seen a lot in Zoe decks is cards that enabled her to move, primarily because of her signature weakness, often requires her to traverse the map. And so picking up a card like uh, Elusive or Shortcut in order to get her across the map quickly and efficiently is, uh, is another great uh, addition so dipping into seeker or rogue for some of those movement cards is a uh, is often uh, a good idea zoe's signature card is zoe's cross it's a one cost asset that has two combat and one wild skill icon item and charm trait zoe samaras deck only as a response after an enemy becomes engaged with you exhaust zoe's cross and spend one resource deal one damage to that enemy and it takes up a, an accessory slot. What do you guys think about Zoe's Cross? I mean, on its face, it's a really good item. The only yeah. problem is that you don't really have a good way of getting it out, like getting it oh, out of your yeah. deck. So you can't really rely on getting it, but when you, the games that you do draw it, man, is it good? Like being yeah. able to get that free damage is so strong. So I think one thing that's really nice about Zoe's, Zoe's Cross is that, okay, often enough, in an Arkham game, especially true in like three and four players, when there are multiple enemies on the board, it becomes like a puzzle of how do we deal with all these enemies. And one thing that Zoe's Cross is very good for is it gives you another tool for that, for those mathematics of how am I going to, in my three actions, deal with multiple enemies. Because Zoe's Cross, I can say, I engage this thing that has three health, I hit it for one damage with my cross, and then I'll use my machete to take it out. And there I've spent one action and I've dealt with a three health enemy. And then that leaves you two more actions to deal with other things. So between like Zoe's Cross and Vicious Blow and Veet and Beat Cop, Zoe's really able to dial the damage that she needs at any given time mm -hmm. without necessarily having to make lots of tests to get there. Yeah, and it's also really nice for enemies with aloof as well, because it helps oh, to yeah. mitigate that like action sink of the engage. So like with Zoe, yeah, you can you can gain the resource and then spend that resource to deal damage and then whack at it with the machete, if, or if it's still just, alive, you know, or just yeah, or just kill the stupid whippoorwills that follow you I, around the map. Yep, I wasn't gonna say it. You said it, <laughs> but that's those that's dang exactly, whippoorwills, man. Those dang whippoorwills. Yeah, whippoorwills are. It's pretty nice because whippoorwills make everything in the sp in the location difficult to deal with. So just. The fact that Zoe's Cross is Tesla's is kind of a godsend when dealing with River Wills. Ah, oh, it's great, yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're unlucky, you have like two River Wills in your location. Oh. Yeah, oh. It, it really mitigates that issue you have with with those small, annoying enemies like the Whipper Wills, where you're basically wasting an action to have to engage them, but then Zoe's Cross makes it that you're sort of gaining that action back by immediately killing them and you're not losing as much tempo as as you might have yeah. otherwise it's also great for other small enemies like the swarm of rats i think it actually gets better as the game goes on because dunwich tends to feature a lot of two and four health enemies and then as the game progresses three health becomes more common which for many a guardian that sort of puts them in it's going to take me two actions to kill this yeah. thing whereas zoe it's still in one action territory because she can hit it with the cross and then attack and and take it out uh, a lot more efficiently so if you can get zoe's cross down which uh, like you said is a bit of a problem because she doesn't have a, a good way of of grabbing it uh, it can be uh, make games a lot more smooth for her than uh, without it i i'd say one of the the biggest issues with the cross besides her not having a way to, to grab it easily is it that it takes up the accessory slot and I don't think that's such an issue 
if you just have revised core and um, Dunwich. But as your card pool expands, the uh, Guardians get a lot more cards that are contesting for that accessory slot, and it can be uh, a tough choice whether you want to include those cards because you've you've got the cross there as well. Yeah, in the in the revised core, I'm a big fan of Holy Rosary because it helps her deal with treacheries and it helps shore up her um, her sanity. But Holy, Holy Rosary is also an accessory, so... Yeah, I believe yeah. Police Badge is also an accessory. Yeah, well, thankfully, at least with those two assets, you can, in theory, get rid of them, either through yeah. using their ability in the case of Police Badge or, like, taking the Soak with the, mm -hmm. with, the ro with the Rosary. So it's not the end of the world if you have to get rid of them. And the Cross is cheap enough that playing it is usually not an issue. You know, at yeah, one resource, affordable. you're able, yeah, you're able to just like get it on the table pretty much at any point in the game. This is a really great signature asset, and it's really nice that it combos with her ability in general. So like, you always have that resource to use it. Yeah, that's right, because it's after an, an enemy come becomes engaged with you, so Zoe can trigger her ability first. Mm -hmm. So enemy comes engaged, you the player, you the player get to choose the order. So you can have Zoe gain the resource, and then you can immediately spend it on the cross. So you're never caught out with the cross. Zoe's signature weakness is Smite the Wicked. It has the task trait, Revelation, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until an enemy is discarded. Attach Smite the Wicked to that enemy and spawn it at the location farthest from you. Forced when the game ends, if attached enemy is in play, you suffer one mental trauma. Now this uh, weakness is uh, similar to uh, Jenny's that we will look at a bit later. And uh, I think this is a, a good example of how signature weakness design has changed over the years where some of these early signature weaknesses are pretty brutal. And a lot of the more, the ones we see in later sets uh, seem like a cakewalk. This one is uh, all sorts of bad. Not only do you not know which enemy you're going to get, it's going to end up possibly quite far away from you, depending on the uh, layout of the locations. Not only do you have to spend actions then trucking across the map to go deal with this enemy, but then you have to kill said enemy, which is going to chew up even more actions and potentially quite a few if you get unlucky and are unable to kill it. You're also wasting resources on that enemy, so if you have the cards like Enchanted Blade or Shriveling or anything like that, this enemy is chewing up those. And then if you don't succeed, you take a Mental Trauma, which is a possibility if you draw this toward the end of the game. You're trying to push to the end and all of a sudden this pops and much like Roland's cover-up, you just don't have the time to deal with this thing. I mean, I think best case scenario, you draw a hunter and it comes to you. Oh, and then it comes at you. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Elusive really helps. I will admit that if the map is pretty large, because at least you can use elusive to like go after it. There is also the instance where you like happen to get a VP enemy and then you want to kill that enemy anyway. So it's like, oh, thanks. I found a VP. Oh, yeah. Let me go get yeah, that think... for us. The, yeah, the, I think the ideal case of Smite the Wicked is when it's a big, nasty enemy that's worth victory points, doesn't hunt, and you don't want to deal with it right now, but you want to deal with it at some point in the game. Mm -hmm. Then Smite the Wicked is great, because then it's like, all right, I'm just going to put you over in your corner, I'll get to you eventually, <laughs> maybe after I've got my gun, <laughs> you know, but, but unlike the second turn of the game, it's like, I, I can't deal with that. So that's the ideal situation. The worst, though, is when you draw Wizard of the Order. <laughs> Yeah, wizard is a And then is you a just go one. Oh <laughs> because you have to you have to go over there immediately and go uh -huh. get it or else everyone's in trouble. Yeah. I hate that. So card. this thing this thing is all over the place. <laughs> yeah. Like you said, Man from Lang, they've really learned to dial down the variance in the weaknesses because, you know, like we've like been saying, the the weaknesses used to just be all over the place. They'd either be like game-breakingly terrible or they'd just be like oh okay this is fine no problem and yeah they've learned to you know, squish them into a bit of a tighter box yeah. in that regard uh yeah mental trauma sucks 
for yes, Zoe. Yes, it does. Because it's her. If if it was physical trauma, she'd be okay with that. Yeah. But mental. Ugh. Fortunately, it doesn't hurt her as badly as Roland, because Roland mm-hmm. only has five sanity, and he has less um, less willpower to deal with um, willpower treacheries. But it's still pretty bad. The yeah. one good thing that helps that's worth noting is that Zoe doesn't have to be the one to kill the, the enemy. Uh, so a friend, if you're split up, you know, a friend could go kill it for you. So there, there is that. Yeah, that's that's a, a good point. In, in multiplayer, if you're playing three or four players, somebody might be in a better position than Zoe to go and, and take care of this thing. In solo, you don't have that luxury. There are enemies like the Wizard of the Order that you absolutely must kill or the game is going to spiral out of control very, very quickly. I know I've ended up in in situations with this card where sometimes you get lucky and you draw it early enough and if the map works out, you can sort of place the enemy at the end. So you're sort of moving that way anyway and you get to the you know, the the goal, and there's an enemy waiting there for you. You just have to get rid of it, and away you go. In other t- cases, you're pushing to the... If you draw this too late, you're pushing to the end. The enemy ends up well behind you, and you're just kind of going back at that point simply is not really a viable option, and you just have to eat the mental trauma and and move on. She does have six sanity, which is is better than Roland, but campaigns are eight scenarios long. So if you end up with a bad a bad string, you can sort of end up low on sanity toward the uh, as you enter yeah. seven or eight if you if you get unlucky with this one. I feel like as an almost silver bullet way to deal with this, it's worth considering a copy of Dynamite Blast in Zoe. Well, it's worth considering a copy of Dynamite Blast in any deck that could take it. I gotta be honest, not gonna lie. But because you know that the enemy is gonna not is not going to be in your spot, in your location, then Dynamite Blast kind of gives you a lot of extra value there because you don't have to move all the way into the enemy's place and then attack it. You can stu- you can save an action on movement by stopping short, throw the dynamite. And then you save another action from having to come back out of the location. So I guess what I'm getting at is that dealing with Smite the Wicked, Dynamite Blast, there's some like guaranteed value there. Yeah, I believe she's yeah. received a couple of other tools um, of late. I believe uh-huh. there was Righteous Hunt in uh, oh, the yes, Innsmouth right. Conspiracy that that lets <laughs> her move towards an enemy. So it's it's a little easier oh and um get over here from the nathaniel cho starter deck right very good with zoe by the way very good yeah and then there's that niche uh card from edge of the earth too on the trail or something like that oh yeah that's true yeah Yeah. that one like lets lets her move yeah discover clues or something like that but yeah yeah Yeah. those are totally ways that you could deal with this weakness if you needed to if you're deciding to play zoe i think you really need to to take a a good long hard look at how you plan on dealing with this and trying to mitigate some of the issues with it because like we've said this can really chew up a lot of time and actions and really kill your tempo if you're not uh, prepared to deal with it in some way alternatively you'll just have sometimes you just have to ignore it and in which case then you're dealing with the the mental trauma afterwards so and there's also the weird side effect with this card where you end up shuffling the encounter deck additional times so like in three and four player when there's an ancient evils in the encounter deck and you're discarding a bunch of cards and then reshuffling that can affect how the game turns out so that's also right that is that is specific but relevant right especially four players when you're blowing through that encounter deck and there are nasty treacheries that you don't want to be drawing over and over but you end up drawing over and over big one i think of is like untamed wilds because that scenario is very tight with its timing to begin with that drawing like three ancient evils is real bad in that scenario all right, and then you shuffle them back in thanks to Smite mm-hmm. the Wicked. Oh, it is worth noting though that the encounter deck only re- only reshuffles itself when empty in the Mythos phase, if I remember correctly. Yeah, when you go so, to an encounter card. Yeah, so worth noting 
if you draw Smite the Wicked and you discard cards from the top of the encounter deck and there are no enemies left, it whiffs. Yeah, Smite the Wicked is a bad one. We will take a look at uh, Jenny's weakness a little bit later, which is is very similar in what it uh, does. I mean, I love it thematically. From a thematic perspective, I think it's a home run. It's just like, hey, there's that thing over there. You need to go kill it because God has told you that it is the enemy. But uh, in uh, practice, it works out being, uh, can be quite uh, labor intensive uh, for Zoe. So what are some of your uh, favorite uh, Zoe builds? You know, like you were saying earlier in our review, that Zoe is a fairly competent solo investigator i quite like the the sort of solo zoe builds that can kind of leverage the mystic card pool and use that willpower to be able to investigate and as you grow your card pool you definitely have plenty of ways to kind of shore up the the clue gathering weakness that she tends to have and she is so good at fighting enemies that if you can deal with four health enemies and in action like you're just you trivialize so much of uh so much of the encounter deck by being able to do that and then having a high willpower pretty much covers the rest of it so you just kind of tank through the scenarios rather than speeding through them like a seeker would and mm -hmm. i enjoy that quite a bit yeah i've uh in the past i've had a lot of good luck with um decks that use like six knives because, you know, she's a chef, so she uses her knives. You know, so you have, like, machetes, and you have... Um, oh, you could you could take some off-class knives, like meat cleaver. That's a fun one. Um, but Plus, it's also thematically appropriate. She's a chef, so she has a meat cleaver. And um, so what I like to do with... Uh, what, I like, what I have had good luck with in the past is, is taking low XP weapons, not really going for things like lightning gun or shotgun or anything like that. And then spending a lot of her XP on on damage dialing tools like Vicious Blow level 2, Beat Cop level 2. Um, these, these all synergize with her cross. So the idea is I can use like a low XP weapon, but then just add on damage as I need it. And then I can start saving XP for things like Get Over Here to deal with um, enemies that are far away um, or anything that events that cost resources and help me engage because I like engaging I'm Zoe so anything so I can spend my uh, XP on things that move like safeguard I can spend thing spend my XP on things that pull enemies to her like get over here you know I, I think I find that a fun build but yeah I've had a lot of good luck with that dialing damage style yeah I also like if you have Innsmith in its entirety, there is some really cool bless builds that you can do with Zoe because she's one of the oh. only guardians that can take survivor cards. Right, and being able to take right. Keep Faith like really helps you boost up that strategy quite a bit. That's true, that's true. Yeah, Keep Faith is so good for that. Yeah, yeah and, and Zoe has high willpower too, so she gets access to like a lot of the good blessed cards that are in the yeah. Guardian card pool. Yeah. That's true. And Enchant Weapon is another great Zoe build because of her high oh, willpower. Oh, that's right. That's right. Yeah, that's really good with Zoe. Yeah, because of her willpower. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really, anything that can leverage willpower in addition to your combat is going to be good with Zoe. Yeah, Zoe's high willpower does make her make a lot of the cards in the Mystic uh, card pool very attractive. The fact that she, you know, besides uh, Sister Mary... And uh, Tommy, she can grab um, survivor cards for the bless build if she needs to. Mm -hmm. The thing I like about Zoe is that you can, if you're playing, depending on the campaign, you have access to Ward of Protection, which can help out a, a great deal if you're playing one of those campaigns that has a lot of agility treacheries, which would normally hamstring a low agility investigator Zoe has has some built-in protection against that besides her her natural willpower. I find uh, when I have built her solo I I also go for the sort of the the low XP weapons. I think in the one uh, campaign I played, I uh, I had a machete and then I I sort of enhanced it with I think it was reliable uh, I used to to give it a little bit more oomph. When you're playing solo, you need to, to shore up her investigation, obviously, which has uh, certainly gotten easier as uh, as time has uh, 
has gone on. So she is a, a very enjoyable investigator to play. She can dish out a ton of damage and uh, can take down enemies uh, very efficiently. And uh, not only is that great in, in multiplayer, but I think if you are taking her for a run in solo, you sort of have the combat aspect taken care of. And that at that point, you just need to, to shore up her investigation and she can be uh, very, very solid. Any final thoughts on uh, Zoe Samaras? I think if you haven't given Zoe a try, definitely try her out. She's a lot of yeah. fun. Uh, I should note that uh, if you are looking for uh, builds for Zoe, you can head over to Arkham DB and search up uh, hundreds of decks with Zoe. There is a, a couple of decks that are built specifically with uh, Zoe and uh, the core set and the Dunwich Legacy uh, card pools. So uh, you can check those out if your card pool is limited, if you may have only the revised core uh, Dunwich and say Edge of the Earth, there is also a deck uh, built specifically with that card pool. And then of course, as your card pool expands, the sky's the limit. You can uh, find all sorts of uh, Zoe decks uh, over on Arkham DB. So uh, check them out. That's gonna do it for this episode. If you enjoyed what you hear, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. If you need to contact me, I can be reached at manfromlang at gmail.com. I'm also on Twitter at manfromlang. Until the stars are right, keep your shotgun close and your elder sign closer. Take care out there, and happy investigating.